Do neuroscientists have any tools for distinguishing true from false memories? Yeah, yeah, we do. One, one way that we've been working on in my lab for over 15 years now is through neuroimaging techniques like functional MRI, earlier uh, PET scans. And in these kinds of experiments, uh, we put people in a scanner and we're basically measuring um, blood flow in their brain, which will increase in parts <coughs> of the brain that become active when you do a particular task, memory or otherwise. And what the uh, functional MRI scanner allows you to do is localize those changes in blood flow or actually changes in the uh, level of blood oxygenation level in the brain very precisely within a few millimeters. So you can put people in the scanner and you can try to measure brain activity when they're recalling a true memory or a false memory. Now, how would you induce a false memory in a brain scanner? Well, there are various ways of doing it. Do we have a minute to induce a false memory in the, in the audience? Sure. OK. Some of you may know this procedure. I'm sure Joe does. But uh, I'm going to read out a list of words. And I want you to pay attention to those words. And I believe that it's very likely that half of you are going to experience false memory within the next minute or two. Here are the words. Candy, sour, sugar, bitter, good, taste, tooth, nice, honey, soda, chocolate, heart, cake, eat, pie. OK, this is kind of standard laboratory memory stuff. We give you a bunch of words. And then um, we could now put you in the scanner. And we could give you a, a memory test. Uh, we could ask you to recall the words on your own. You could try to do that. Or I could give you a test. I could say, is the, is, um, is this word, was this word on the list? Taste. Yeah? OK. Pretty good. It was on the list. How about this word, point? Was that on the list? Anybody think point was on the list? OK, this is a very good audience. Um, <laughs> We'll continue. How about sweet? Yes. Yeah, everyone's got sweet. How many people are sure sweet was on the list? Most people, sweet was not on the list. <laughs> <laughs> so I told you a minute ago that I was going to induce a false memory. And it was actually more than 50% of you is most of you. What's going on there? All the words that I said are related, associated to sweet. Candy, sour, sugar, bitter, good, etc. The point of that is to illustrate one way a certain kind of false memory can be created. More important, you can do that with a lot of different associated words. So we can put you in a brain scanner, and we, after having heard a bunch of lists like that, and we can look at brain activity when you're accurately remembering that taste was on the list versus when you're absolutely convinced sweet was on the list and it's not. And we can say, are there similarities, are there differences? And we've been, we and others have now been doing this for 15 years. And there are a lot of similarities. The activation maps, when you remember uh, the, accurately that taste was on the list and accurately that sweet was on the list, look very similar in many ways. But there are reliable differences that turn up again and again uh, across studies. For example, we saw in an early study back in the mid-90s, and it's shown up now in several others, been replicated and extended, that uh, when you remember that taste was on the list, you heard me saying that, there's a little more activity in uh, the auditory cortex of the brain than when you remember that sweet was on the list, because you never heard it. Several studies have shown that. Other studies have been done with, uh, for example, visual shapes that are kind of a visual analog of what we just did. So I show you a lot of shapes that kind of look like one another, and then I throw in one later on that looks like what you saw before, but it wasn't really there. Um, and you can look at brain activity with neuroimaging uh, for shapes you actually remember and for the look-alike shape that you think was there but wasn't there. A lot of overlap in the brain, but we find that there are parts of the visual cortex now that respond more strongly uh, for the shape you really did see as opposed to the one you, that looks like a lot of things you saw.